I mean, it's not like we're on some kind of timeline. Although, you know, Tony yeah. doesn't need his beauty sleep. Not anymore. I'm yeah, we're just late for mm. Tony. Yeah. That's right. See, Tony doesn't oh, have to get nice. up tomorrow. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. Hello and welcome to another episode of ATS Fully Engaged on the Rocks. This is episode number 11 in which we're going to talk about ATS, drinking, and other things, but probably in the reverse order. So I'm here with my co-hosts, Tony. Hello. And Mitch. Hello. And let's just let's just get it out of the way. What are you guys drinking? Yeah, because we're on the rocks. Go ahead, Tony. Exactly. I am drinking a local brewery, uh, IPA. It is called Legitimate Swells. It's by Twin Oast Brewing. Um, it's off of Catawba Island, which is an island off of Lake Erie. So it is extremely good. It's bright, fruitful, and adventurous. Nice. Wow. Uh, now, was that Are you reading beer? that off the bottle, Tony? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask him if he, he was describing the beer or if he was writing a personal ad. <laughs> uh, I'm not adventurous, so no, it's the beer. No, it's actually uh, really... it's really Married white male my... seeks what? <laughs> <laughs> it's Fruity, actually, yeah, fruit forward, <laughs> adventurous female. <laughs> it's mm. actually a pretty good brewery. They, they actually have a nice place to go to, uh, hmm. so we like to go there. Cool. Um, which is good because my beer fridge is going out and we have plans to go there in the next week or two. So ah. I can stock back up. So Nice. And by out, you mean empty. Uh, I've got two in left. I got two beers. Right. Left. Well, so. I say that because we just recently swapped our refri our beer fridge that was in the garage went out. And oh. so we had, to, we had to get a new one and it got delivered. So we're happy now because there's more room for stuff. So <laughs> Excellent. Mitch, what do you got going on? I am drinking a Boulevardier, which is just a Negroni made with bourbon instead of gin. Classy. It's yep. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good. Although I'm using cheap bourbon, so it doesn't taste quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how cheap? What bourbon are you so, using? I have no idea. So my <laughs> really my cheap. boss at work went to a conference, and I guess the um, attendance prizes this year were bottles of bourbon. But they're they're uh, white labeled, right? So they're bourbon. They're labeled with the you know the the name of the um, parts manufacturer or whatever the conference they were at. So it would, oh, who knows okay, what kind you. of bourbon? It is. Oh gosh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not bad, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not good. Great, either. right? It, it's middle of the road for sure, right? Um, it's just it's got a little. It's got a rougher edge than I might like in a in a mixer. So yeah, well, I I find. So for me, a Negroni, even if it's with not very great gin, for some reason the Campari and the, uh, and yes. the just kind of co cover it up and smooth it out. But I find that not to be the case as much with a mm -hmm. that it's like right. the bourbon well, because it's harsher, so it comes through correct. more strongly. Right. Well, and if you're making it if you're making it classically, right, you you put more bourbon than you would normally put gin, so it just it's exactly. almost overpowering it's more. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you should just try then when you have a. Oh, I'm going to try the next time when I have like a not not the greatest bourbon. Try to maybe, maybe cut it a little. Yeah, try the Negroni yeah. proportions instead of them. Right. Well, because yeah, because I was making it with Long Branch and that it tasted fantastic. Long <laughs> right. So I figured, well, I just I'll try the I'll try the middle of the road stuff and we'll see how it goes. And it's not like I said, it's not bad. It's just not great. Right. Next time. Next time, things are going to be different. So, Evan, well, you said you were a, mixing a drink. I, I mixed a drink. I made a, a hanky-panky. A what? <laughs> ah, I, uh, I, you, you got me on that one. That was to go with Tony's personal ad. Right. Uh, well, I think maybe, that, maybe that's why Evan was late. He was uh, yeah. hanky-panky. Was hanky -panky <laughs> just the drink. Just the drink. No, this is so. We have a couple. We have a couple cocktail books that are like you know old, forgotten cocktails or whatever. And most of them you can't really make because they involve obscure ingredients, or at least you know, ingredients. <laughs> I'm too too lazy and cheap to go out and, and dig up. Right. But uh, but this one you can is use just, them once and never use them again. Yeah, exactly. And it seems like you know yeah yeah some and a lot of them just sound weird and gross. So you have to kind of be mm -hmm. dedicated. 
Uh, but no, so this one is just uh, equal parts uh, sweet vermouth and gin. And then mm. instead of having Campari, it has just a few dashes of uh, Fernet Branca, which is like a... I don't know. That's uh, it's kind of like a vermouth or Campari. It's a fortified. Uh, what do you call that? Never fortified wine, uh, okay. but it's very bitter, like Campari, but it has more of a like mint notes to it. Hmm. Um, so is yeah, it a liqueur or a wine? It's a liqueur. It, it, yeah, it's like vermouth. It's a. Liqueur. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, that's not a liqueur either. That's a fortified fortified right. wine. I would call it. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's. I, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued because you know gin and. I mean, I'm okay. I'm in. <laughs> it's very much. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would recommend trying. And Fernet Branca is like much easier to find than a lot of the other obscure thing. Like that. I mean, they sell it hmm. here in Panama. Sure. For crying out loud, so it's not right. <clears throat> not too obscure. Oh, and then the orange peel. That's an important part. If I don't have uh, orange, I'll just skip it in Negroni, yeah. and I don't really care too much. But for this it one, it's pretty it doesn't important. Change it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't okay. change but this one does, I think. Yeah, and it's and it's really hard to get to pour a very tiny amount of, hmm. of you know, the recipe calls for two dashes. Two dashes. And we have uh, yeah, yeah, two dashes exactly. Eh. Which we have little measuring spoons that are like say smidgen and pinch and dash. <laughs> and if you use the one that <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, I, they're not mine. Right. But if you use the one that actually says dash, it's just it's way too much. It's way overpowering. Oh. Uh, so today I used the one that was I think pinch. And uh, yeah, it came out. This is probably the best one I've made. I got lucky. Nice. So, yeah, All right. I'm gonna it's gonna go too it. fast, though. I can. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd recommend. You'll it. have to send me that look. The name, the actual name, or actually, we'll put it in the show notes. But yeah, so I can go find it. But. Hanky panky. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, well that was me, a me, lot of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> let me ask you one question because I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. So, Mitch, yep. I was in, I was in a liquor store and buying drinks. And I saw the Bombay, it was like in a can. It was a gin and tonic in a can. I was just curious yeah. if you've had that. If I, if I haven't I had the one from Bombay. There's a local distiller, um, Pinkney Ben, that makes a gin and tonic in a can, which is, it's good, but it's overly sweet. So my okay. my my guess is that they make them that way because it comes in a can and, you know, they know because the target audience for that is not... <laughs> us gotcha. so they, gotcha. they make it sweeter than normal but that, that's my my one experience is with okay. um with uh pinkney ben's gin and tonic I think uh, which like i said it's good it's just a it's... little sweet what's that evan oh i think you had mentioned that actually that come up on the yeah show. i think probably yeah. one of them so, so yeah. listeners go back and listen to all the episodes one through ten and see if you can find the yeah yeah maybe, oh maybe that's 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 actually well we haven't announced it yet. But we have. We do oh, have at some point. At some point, a, we uh, should talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that would be that would be a funny one to uh, the first person to <laughs> yeah. say which, which episode, episode it was and give the time right. kind timestamp wins. Right. I forgot. About well, that. Do, we, do we want to talk about that now? Since you kind of uh, said it and then go in, or you want to talk about it later? Teaser. Yeah, spoiler like alert. Later. But we'll totally talk about spoiler, it later. Exactly. Teaser. Yeah. Spoiler. Can you tease and spoil at the same time? Sure. Yeah, we just did. Bam. <laughs> Sweet. Fast. But we didn't really. Spoil everybody else listens to this. Yeah, everybody listens to this at two times speed anyway. So who cares? <laughs> just to just to get to like the five minutes of interesting ATS talk right. and post of the the drunken rambling. Right. Yeah. Well, what fair. I what that's I have fair. found, and this is a pro tip, is if you listen to Tony's videos at one point seven five, it sounds like normal speech. <laughs> Am I really that slow? That's slow. It's just that your your normal speech pattern. You take pauses. So okay. it's a little it's a little fast at one seven five. So that was more okay. joke than, than fact. But okay. Deliberate, deliberate. Yeah. One, one and a half is really about normal. But that, but that one and a half is normal for almost any podcast or anything because it takes out the the pauses that most people okay. have in their normal speech patterns, right? So. I got you. Well, right, it's unless really, the yeah. really yeah, I was just picking better. on Tony. But. <laughs> I, yeah. I, well, I will tell you, I got a new microphone for recording. And oh, really? Sound, yes, for for my videos. So, nice. And I've, I've done one video with it. It wasn't an ATS video because I got <sighs> it after I did that one. But so my next ATS video will have this mic, and it actually sounds much clearer and crisper. Oh, good. Uh, because it's it's a wireless mic. But does it sound like this? Yes, it does. I actually, I actually have to ramp down the decibel levels on oh, right. my phone. Oh, that's awesome! So loud. Yeah, 
And then editing, I even in editing, I'm like, ah, I think I'll bring that down just a little bit more. <laughs> That's kind of loud. So, editing. Who edits stuff? Come on. I actually do some because I missed. I actually missed a uh, like I took the casualties, but I didn't do any of the morale checks. And I was oh, like, oh, oops. Shit. Yep. So morale checks are very it. important. Yeah, and I so I actually went in. And said, "Oh, I missed the morale checks, but I'll get it at the end." So I yeah. had to make sure that it was no. I see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm like, how did I forget that? That's mm -hmm. like, like a major part of the game. Apparently, it's not in Nevo, but it is in ATS and in, in, right. in Cats. We won't talk so, about that. No, let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> we can go there later, but not yet. <laughs> All right. Speak, speaking of Mevo and Cats, what have you cats gotten in recently? Well, Anything? I have been playing the Cabbage Patch Stand uh, solo, uh, playing both sides, and that's on our ATSFE YouTube channel. Yeah. So, um, but is that, a, is that a new acquisition? No, it's actually one okay. I've had for a while. Okay. Um, I haven't played any of my new ones yet, um, but I do have my scenario design. We'll talk about that. That's a little right, more right. there. Um, so I played Cabbage Patch Stand, which is Scenario 2 for action uh, at Carantan, which is a phenomenal module, by the way. If you guys can find it, I recommend it very highly. Uh, the two scenarios I've played so far um, have been wonderful. Cool. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm um, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, go ahead, Tony. Talk about that. So talk about the, um, the solo videos you've been doing and then talk about your uh, other your live play. Oh, yeah. So I've been playing a uh, new gentleman by name, Brian. He had it, jumped on the Discord server. And we've been playing the first scenario, um, which is called... No, see, i got to look it up. And this is and this is from Action the and Carantan, right? Yes, Action and Carantan, yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, really a basic module. It's it's hmm. There's not a lot to them. There's four scenarios in it. And I would say it's a great, great kind of... If you're getting back into, which... Uh, Brian is getting back into ATS. He played mm -hmm. some previously. Getting back into it. Um, he just recently got the way. And Yeah, I saw um, him post something about that on Discord. Yeah. Or yep, he got those. Yeah. So it was it was really, really good. And he's uh, hmm. we've had some fun with it today. Uh, we had some uh, melees that went down to the last die roll. Uh, <laughs> we both had two squads and a LMG and we ended up he won, but he has a half squad. That has a casualty on it, so he has a casualty half squad nice. left. Well, in a well, what's a half squad? I'm, I'm unclear on this concept. <laughs> the half squad. It's a reduced flip squad. A reduced half squad. squad. It's still, a, it's still a mean? half squad. He meant reduced squad. It's a half squad. Yeah, that, that's a different game. It's a half squad. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> reduced squad, half squad. I don't care. It's not as strong as a full squad. Let's put it's it's down. it's still an MSC though. It's a multi-soldier yeah. counter. Yes, yeah. there's only two, there's right. two oh, soldiers because, on it. Because you can't call it a multi-man counter because that would be bad. That would be oh no, that's uh, that's uh, probably trademark. That would be genderist, yeah, or trade, whatever the term trade. is. Right. Did you also leave down residual fire, or did you leave collateral fire? Collateral. Oh shit, we never did. Oh, that. you didn't play collateral fire. <laughs> yeah, four videos in and still no collateral fire. It's all right. It's all right. No, we I played with only call up like once. I did it in the first video, but I totally forgot it. <laughs> it's easy to forget. Well, luckily, I don't think we would have. I would have gone anywhere where there was. So that's right. have one of those have we? Did. So remind me, Tony. Did you do a battlefield walk around on action at Carantan or? I did not, okay. and there's a reason behind that, okay. um, right. because I didn't get the right stuff with it. Oh. For some reason, they sent me a World War One German. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I you had... still could have done it, right? And said, you won't get this sheet. You'll probably get a World War II sheet, but... Yeah, well, maybe maybe so. at some point you can see it, but anyway. So, yeah, well, actually, I, I, let's do. So, how many how many maps? How many scenarios does it come with? And so it's really good. It's small. Yeah. It's only two maps, and it comes okay. with more scenarios. Okay. It is a basic game. Right. Because it comes with the basic rules, and then yeah, just trash those, rules. burn them, whatever. Yeah. Feed them to the dog. Um, you really don't need them, but they do have the Normandy terrain. Uh, right. For because uh, it's ATS basic game two Normandy terrain. 
Okay. So that's the only real difference. So cool. it is a smaller one, but it's got some really, really good stuff. Nice. Um, and then, so that so the first two scenarios, the fourth scenario definitely has some armor in it, which is pretty mm. cool. Actually, cool. quite a bit. Yeah. And then the fourth scenario, yeah, there's quite a bit there too. Mm. So it kind of ramps you up with the modules. Each scenario has a little bit more to it. So. Um, cool. And the nice thing is it could be played multiple times for right. sure because there's so many different ways to go at things. So, um, but yeah. Okay. So Evan, any any new ATS product in, or what have you been playing? Sorry, I'm mixing another hanky panky. Uh, well, I'll go then. How's that? So I got. Well, I've been playing Mebo number twenty two with uh, Sia Sadoy with Evan. Um, but you would, you know, hopefully listeners know I've already seen. Uh, us post on ATSV and the discord about the, you know, where it started and how's it going kind of deal. But, um, that's been, that's been cool working through all those rules. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about that more later, but, uh, it's neat. I, I've been having a lot of fun with Mevo and Evan. I'm sure you'll, you have too, and you'll talk about that too, but, um, it's just, it's just, it's just neat to play with new modern kind of stuff. But, uh, the other, the other thing that I've gotten in recently we will talk about how, but a copy of BRL 1192. I think I will probably do a battlefield walk around. I'm waiting for some confirmation on the contents, um, but I, I think I'll do that. Even though it's not really ATS, it's BRL 1192. Totally different, right? It's based. It's based much more closely on the original Tobruk uh, rules, but still, people might be interested. So we can we can do adjacent, right? Be it's fun. ATS adjacent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. I mean, my, my impression of not really. This is just. <laughs> <laughs> well, my impression is that it's not well. At least from the little I know of it, uh, is that it seems like definitely very ATS inspired. Mm -hmm. Well, or I, I, ATS is very much inspired by it, uh, mm -hmm. even perhaps more so than than the original Tobruk. But I could be wrong about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it started that way, right? So. We will find I out did. when you do your battlefield walk around. Exactly. I did find out. I did get one new package in, by the way. I just realized okay. that. Yeah. I got uh, Operation Deadstick, which. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's actually, I, mean, I will be doing it, but on the front it says Pegasus Bridge, D Day, mm -hmm. nineteen forty four British airborne assault on the Orn and Con Canal bridges. Right. Um, but what's funny is it says Pegasus Bridge mm -hmm. on the cover, but I ordered Operation Dead Stick, which yeah. is the same thing. But right. well, we talked about that, right? Because I I had yeah. ordered I, I so I already did the battlefield walk around on that. I don't think we published yeah. that yet. Um, but anyway, yeah, mine's called Operation Dead Stick, and yours is called Pegasus Bridge, which is interesting. But whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we'll have so to update the ATS good. history spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm getting to the point where um, I have enough counters that I really don't need anything with counters anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. So, well, so it's like, oh, water clip, you know. <laughs> Good problems to have. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I, I guess I did get something then if we're going, I mean, if you can bring up BRL 1192, I, sure. I just got a oh. copy of the original to Brooke. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why not? I mean, that's, that's where it all came from. Where it's all started. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually pretty cool. I'm, I, I don't know if, hmm, for where I'm at right now with learning new rules, I'm not sure I'll sit down to actually learn it, but I'm very happy to have it. At some point, I'll look through it. I, it's uh, it's interesting. It's got a, a really beautiful mounted map, which, I mean, not that the, the map itself oh, really? is just desert. Oh, yeah, sure, I mean, right. the map itself is just desert, but then you look at the back and it looks like, you know, a real board game. Like, <laughs> it's uh, it's fancy. Hmm. And, and then the other thing that was a big surprise was uh, the rule book. Which is just programmed instruction, like not no, you know, no case numbers seventeen point one three one one. It's just they play the first scenario, and those are the rules for the first scenario, and then you play the second scenario, and those oh, are the programmed rules instruction. Yeah, yeah, and but that's the whole rule book, as far as I can tell. And yeah, I was like, and there's not that many rules. Or, I mean, it's not very long. It's certainly much much shorter than. You know, most war games we play these days of that sort. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty fascinating. I have to uh, I have to dig into it at some point and uh, post some sort of I don't know. I feel like it's we owe it to Hal Hawk and and Ray and everybody to you know right. keep keep the legacy alive, right? In different ways. 
Cool. So yeah, but as for playing, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been playing that scenario. I've been soloing a lot of the different Mevo, Mevo scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. The most recent one that's been taking a while is number 13, Lost Clusters, which is... Uh, I'm, I got a, I've got a piece that I think will it'll come up next week mm -hmm. uh, on the blog, but uh, spoiler alert, it's <laughs> definitely the best Mevo scenario I've played so far. That's really, I don't know, the fourth okay. or fifth one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a combined arms, uh, Russians assaulting a, a Ukrainian village. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, awesome. the, the rules for the the vehicles themselves are, are probably the best the best part of the rules mm. for, for Mevo. But <laughs> uh, when you have the vehicles and, inf and infantry combined in a, you know, in an actual combined arms situation where it, you know, really right. matters, coordinating them well is super important to success. Uh, yeah, you really, it's really, it's very interesting and lightning and a lot, it's a lot of fun to play cool and i just, don't want to ruin case it too much nobody nobody knows just in case nobody knows uh, the blog that evan references atsfe.wordpress.com oh there you go you gotta gotta right. get that plug in right and the, and the youtube is I, I don't know if we have i think we have a vanity url i can't even remember but if you mm -hmm. just search for ats battlefield walk around atsfe you'll find it on youtube we do because you 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 figured it out live on two, two or three podcasts point. ago. Right. Another trivia question: Which podcast? Yes. Is <laughs> that one's easy. Anyway. One's more recent. Right. Also, I put too much Fernet Branca in this in this hanky panky, so it's a little bit too minty. But <laughs> ooh, I don't know if I, I, I swear it's the same measurements. I swear I did it the exact same way, but a big mint guy. But what anyway. anyway, I'll try it only because you recommended it. Yeah, well, well, don't, don't, yeah. don't hold me to too high of a standard. All right. All right. So I think, uh, no, it's good stuff. So little, little brief interlude, because I think, you know, well, mostly because I wanted to talk about it, but, uh, the one thing I want to talk about was what have you been reading lately? And we don't have to go deep into it. Right. But Tony, what have you been reading? Uh, three days in June, the third pair of battles for Mount Langdon, which is nice. In uh, the Falklands War, um, yep. I was I'm... recommended to this by a uh, YouTube uh, subscriber that I had on my on my Tony Sport Life. Uh, he had passed <laughs> away uh, back in June or January, oh. but he was he was going on and on and on about this hmm. book, so I picked it up. And I'll tell you what, the way it's written as if you're sitting around talking to these guys and they're like well it's like one starts talking about something and then the other one kind of comes in and tells about it and it's all in order so it's not like all willy-nilly right. but it's really cool and it's separated by platoons hmm. so it's like this division this company and this platoon and there's going through each platoon and ah. what they saw and it's it's really it's a great book i recommend nice. it I, I'm, if you're i'm I'm looking at it right now. It's on my bookshelf. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. The guy spent years getting this, getting all the stories from everybody cool. that was there. And, but yeah, the best way I can describe it is, is okay, you've got the platoon that right. survived. They're there, and they're telling you their story, and it's Ooh. in a nice sequential order, too. So. That's going to dovetail nicely with mine. But the, the proper term for that is bopsat. A bunch bop of people sat. sitting around a table. Okay. <laughs> Right, Evan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the the super technical term. Yep. It doesn't do the military, so it needs an acronym. Just that that's, that's right. A really funny, an acronym. A really yep. funny acronym. Yep. What are what are you reading, Evan? I am reading Syrian Conflagration, which is about the mm. first two years of the Syrian Civil War. And I I mostly oh. bring this up because well, for a couple of reasons. So are you guys familiar with who Tom Cooper is? Mm-mm. Okay. Well, let me let me let me intro just real quick. So, what years are we talking about? Uh, twenty eleven to twenty thirteen. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. And it's and it's from Helion Press, which is uh -huh. like the British. Very familiar. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I this is their first book. Uh, well, so that I've yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Listeners, if you don't know Helion Press, go check them out. They have tons and tons of tons, tons of content. And tons yeah. Of stuff. yeah. All right. Yeah, I actually had ordered just just ordered a couple other books, and I've been hesitant to order physical books mm. uh, because I was like, ah, shipping from England, and then. But then it was actually not that bad. It was like, uh -uh. you know, like for two books, it was like 10 bucks to the U.S. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, okay. I guess I'll do this again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> it costs more to ship from California to Ohio than it does from London to... Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. I don't there know what's go. going on. So. Yeah. 
hey, but you know, take advantage for sure. Right, exactly. Uh, so, so this one is in PDF, which is not the mm -hmm. greatest, but it's fine. Eh. Yeah, yeah, it's modern, modern reading at its nice. finest. Okay. Uh, so, so Tom Cooper is, I don't know, an Austrian defense guy. He writes about military affairs. He writes. Oh, know, okay. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he so he has a he writes updates. He's been writing updates on the war in mm -hmm. Ukraine. Yep, yep. Uh, and they're really they're pretty interesting. He clearly has a lot of contacts and knows a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, you can agree disagree with you know with, with mm -hmm. different things he says, but sure. But he, he clearly knows more than most people are you know pontificating on the internet about such things. Right. Um, so I, <laughs> I really enjoy his blog because okay, clearly English is not his first language, and clearly he's not you know not taking the time to do a lot of editing, which is fine, uh, but he's pr pretty sarcastic, which some people don't like, but I find amusing. Mm. Uh, it, the problem is in the actual book, you know, it's a, you know, a professional book, so he can't be sarcastic. So it's just kind of dry, but then, and it's much more edited, of course, but it's still, you know, they could have used a, a native speaker could have used a, <clears throat> they could have used a native speaker editor to hmm. go over it one more time. So, gotcha. uh, so the writing and all that stuff's not, you know, not super great. But I, but I do bring it up because it, with Mevo and you know, geeking out about all the vehicles and, <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, what is that the T fifty five AVM? You know, it's got the ERA, but the T fifty five AV doesn't, or you know, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of that going on. A lot of the, you know, a lot of really nice art and. And paintings or paintings, drawings, I don't even know, art of mm. tanks and planes and BMPs and all that cool. good stuff. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. It's very, very much inspiring to make me want to go play like a, I don't know, a serious, <laughs> a serious <laughs> Mevo scenario. You're going to have to wait. We don't have those yeah. yet. Well, yeah, that'll probably be in T55 somewhere, but yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, the counters are there, but probably it wouldn't be, wouldn't quite right. be the same. Right, right. But, all right, Mitch. I know you've been you've been clawing. I know. You know the, the only reason I've been regaling Evan uh, recently with so the the two books. I so I just finished Red Platoon, and right before that, I read The Outpost. So The Outpost is by Jake Tapper, um, and it talks about uh, Cop Keating, Combat Outpost Keating in Afghanistan, and it talks about all the history of it and, and leading up to the actual attack. And it goes into pretty good detail on the actual attack on the outpost as well. It, it will at times make you angry and frustrated, but also proud. Um, and excited for your, the troops, right? That's, I'm, not, I'm not really ex expressing that well, but it does, that's really what it is. It's, it's, it's more about the people, right? Um, and then about the decisions that led up to it, which again, that's the angry and frustrated part. But anyway, I, so I followed that up with Red Platoon. So Red Platoon was the platoon, one of the platoons in Combat Outpost Keating, and it was led by Clinton Romisha who wrote it. And he, so he features he's featured in the outpost, but then he wrote this book and it's a much, so Tony kind of like your three days in June, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's his view of what happened in terms of going through the official reports, talking to all the guys that were there, his recollections and everything else. Uh, so the outpost is good. Red platoon is great. It's a superlative. Read. Oh, wow. okay. Very it's well. Cool. You really like um, the outpost. That I mean. did. I liked the outpost a lot. I liked Red Platoon better. Well, I, I liked Red Platoon better as a, a book. So in other words, it was I think the just the language and the way it was written was much more accessible. The outpost had more background, right? Uh, Ramesh's book was really just about what happened during those whatever how many hours it was, right? Um, and again, it was powerful, but the outpost gives you a little bit more context and stuff like that. But anyway, it. It, you know, in the larger context with the announcement from last Friday's emailer about um, Mevo Afghanistan, I think that's going to be pretty freaking cool, right? So, I'm, anyway, I'm ready. I, I highly recommend both books. So, speaking of the Friday know. emailer, yes, what do I know, we Evan, you got right a chance to see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mevo Afghanistan. This this Friday's emailer with the extra maps coming with. Uh, five through eight of Mevo. I mean, the, so I'm assuming that the, the combined map that he's showing at the beginning of that email is the, all the maps that come with the epically cream your jeans, eight. put all this in play yes. a massive campaign map. Yes. I, I mean, that's... that map is freaking cool. There's yeah, a field, there's a rip, a river runs through it, which I skipped all that shit in the e emailer, but whatever. 
I was too um, excited. I couldn't. I couldn't. I know. I didn't have the patience because I was too excited. I know, but yeah, it's, no, I, it's it's pretty cool. And as Ray will point out in the emailer, this is free if you ordered five through eight. Right, you're going to get these maps. So um, they're uh, he's calling them bonus maps. I don't. I guess I don't know which. He doesn't say which modules they come in. I don't know if one. Oh yeah, will come that's in weird. Each module, if you right? didn't, but whatever. Again, it's, it it goes back to the whole thing that. Uh, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you don't, uh, right? Uh, the assumption, on, I think, on critical hits part is that was very really echoey in here. Yeah. Let me go to a different room. Uh, right. is, is that you're, you know, you're getting all of right. them. So it's if, like, if you ordered if you five, you probably ordered six through eight. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, I don't care. I don't care about those people who will only want the Lithuanians because they're, right. you know. Grandpa. He's talking to you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still not. I'm still not sold yet. Yeah. No, I, that's, that's yeah. Right. I mean, I you know, I I I can't predict how it, it might even come as its own separate pack. Who knows, right? At, although at this point, I'm like, keep the keychain and just give me more maps, right? But whatever. Yeah, well, I, 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 well, hold on, hold I on. I do. I want the keychain. Don't do don't get me wrong, keychain. but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, and the maps really are legitimate bonus content because. Oh yeah, exactly. That was not announced previously. This is brand new. This is. Well, and not only that, but so there was a thing about the, you know, the maps being back printed and they were going to have, mm -hmm. you know, winter eyes mm -hmm. on one side, not yeah, the other. Whatever. Um, yeah, exactly. And so they did away with that. And then they added two more maps, I think, per module. Mm -hmm. And then for the five through eight. And then they added the other four maps on top of that. So those, I mean, right. I mean, is it be like, oh, okay, well, I got gypped of yeah. my double printed winter rise map or whatever, but no. So you get extra maps with, within the module and the extra four on top of that. Correct. So, I mean, that is right. truly, I mean, cause he, truly bonus. Yeah, I mean, he, he broke it down, right? He's like, so in Latvia, you get four. In Estonia, you get four. In Lithuania, you get four. In Poland, you get four. And then bonus, you get four. So again, I don't know if those are like sent yeah, that'd be weird for people who ordered all of them. Right? I don't know. We'll find out. But the fact remains, that's 20 maps. It's a, there's a lot of maps well, now for Mevo. Let me be clear. 20 map panels. No, oh, yeah. Each map panel is not maps. that large. No, no they're no, 12. Say, uh, what did he say? He said is they're 12 by 18. Uh, yeah, roughly 12, 12 by 18. 18. Yeah. Oh, okay. 12 by 18. I mean, they're not oh. they're not large because the hex, they're not. hex sides are, sexes are oh, huge. The hex sides but are I mean, massive. Right. But when you put them all together, then you're correct. Then, then you've got a map. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you've got a map yeah. for the ages there. Yeah, that was. When I saw that, I was like, so, oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So, well, yeah, let me put it this way. I feel a lot better about my buy-in of five through eight. How's that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're not like, you're like, oh, man, why did they, why didn't they just put all the, the Latvians, yes. Lithuanians, to, you know, together? Why did they separate them out? I was like, well, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're not really buying it for each of the individual nations. You're buying it for all the, all the effing maps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But whatever. So, anyway, I, yeah, I'm pretty excited. And then, like, like we uh, alluded to, um, so not this Friday emailer, which is so today is uh, the eighth. The previous Friday Friday emailer, July eighth. The previous Friday emailer, um, he mentioned uh, eight, uh, Mevo Afghanistan. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, so I I did I did email uh, Ray about about you know saying I was like. Offering words of support uh, <laughs> because, I was, because he, he had mentioned, you know, months ago or whatever, that all the ASL stuff was eventually going to be turned into ATS. And I was like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that before. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of Arab Israeli modules, you know, that oh. are still, still waiting for that are, there's a gazillion right. in ASL and one, one and for ATS. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, he emailed me back and, you know, was appreciative of the feedback and, uh, it is like, yeah, yeah, well, this is the plan. You know, we can, we can do this and we're going to do it. And there's going to be a bunch more. I mean, you know, he put a list that was also, you know, creating your genes worthy if mm. you're into post-World War II uh, stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, we'll, mm. we'll see if people, if people, uh, what? Post-World War II is different. Yeah. Well, well, this <laughs> is post-World War II. We're going to talk about this that. This is, yeah, yeah. So let's get, let's get into it. Post World War yeah. II versus modern. What's, so what's so modern welcome to the actual primary topic of tonight's podcast. <laughs> yeah. Only you know, thirty something 40 minutes, minutes in, in, but whatever, yeah. right? So we wanted to talk about post World War II ATS. So CATS, classic ATS, not Mevo, right? So Mevo is the modern evolution of ATS into we'll talk about that a little bit, right? Into current 
I mean, like like T eighties, T eighty fours versus T seventy twos. That it's happening today, right? That kind of stuff. Bradley's against uh, T nineties, whatever, right? Although that would probably be a bad matchup. M one A twos against T nineties, right? Um, Mevo versus um, ATS, classic ATS with the post World War Two flavor. So there's a bunch of modules. We're going to talk about that. Um, and then there's this, there's like, like Evan was alluding to, what, where does Afghanistan fit in that? But anyway, I mean, the, the biggest thing is you, you, so we used to refer to post-World War II ATS as modern ATS, and we can't talk about it that way anymore, right? Because there's Nevo. So. <laughs> modern, yeah. yeah. Modern, right. is, modern Which is, is actually modern. modern is so. now, yeah. Right. Yeah. I almost yeah. thought like, what do we call it? Post-modern? I'm like, oh no, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was talking about that with my brother, and he's like, "Well, wait, if we're in, if it's postmodern right now, then like, what comes, what comes after what comes that? Next, right, right. What's postmodern? Modern? What? Post, 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 postmodern. Whoa. Right. Post, postscript. Post, but what? PPS. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mentioned that, that PPS, PPPPS is stuff is nonsense. Post, post oh, that's postscript. All bullshit, yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. One, one PS is fine. Ray does right. it. Why don't your PPS, PPPP? What? You probably should just put it in the body of the email. Exactly. The, le the letter. Although right. the fact Although, that it even exists is ridiculous. So what you're really talking about, Evan, is that that last rule over penetration in the Mevo rules. That's a PP. That's a PS. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's a over penetration. Oh, over penetration in Mevo is like rule twenty. It's the very last rule in Mevo, but it really should be in the in the you know whatever the 13s or whatever the fire combat rules are but it's like oh shit we forgot this let's just stick it in at the end whatever. well the number the case numbering of the oh. i mean if you notice there's almost as many case numbers in or more no there are more in the in the uh -huh. mevo rule book than there are in the, yep. in the cats rule <laughs> book Shh. yeah whatever. probably could yeah, you know, but we're, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk, about, here to talk about post World War II ATS. All right, Vietnam. Nam. Well, post World yeah. War II. What was the first I major conflict was... after post World War II? Oh, it was, it was it was Korea. Korea. That's right. Wait. So is after post World War II? Is that a post post script to World War II? Oh my gosh! Oh stop. God! Stop it! <laughs> Well, you said it. You said after. You know post -World what? World hey, II. Evan, we're not having any hanky panky on this that podcast. Was... <laughs> I thought that was a great joke. I thought you guys were going to think that was hilarious. I thought that was just dead on. I hope oh people are laughing in their cars driving to they work are. right now. They are. In fact, two people Probably just not, wrecked. But... Thank you, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, it, the joke might have been a little bit too cerebral. And ridiculous, <laughs> but, you know, I, I tried. That's all right. Anyway. All right. So, Korea. Uh, Korea. Korea. So, as Had, far as out of the I know, there are two modules. Um, I'm I'm welcome. I'm happy to be corrected if somebody knows anything else. But there's Pork Chop Hill, um, which I think was like 2016 or something like that. But the but was, was previously a, there was a TT version, which was the Battle of Pork Chop Hill. Correct. And then there's Ridge Runners of Tok Tong Pass, which I think was also 2016. I don't know. I don't know about the year, but anyway, was previously just yes. Tok Tong Pass, and it was a boxed product. So. Yeah, in 2016, they came out with a bunch of like reprints, right, and right. this was before I was playing ATS. Yeah. Maybe even before. I mean, I and, yeah, I mean, they were just re re envisionings of previous stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, so some the, some of them were more re envisioned than others. <laughs> I mean, correct, right? Yeah, I mean, some yeah, of them had more. That, right. yeah, yeah, we don't have to rehash it all, but yeah. and there's also don't forget there's a uh, if you have um, I can't pack one now. Yeah, it's, is, has it one or two? It's one. <sighs> I think it's one. It might be two. Don't hold me to that. We'll correct it if it's la later. Yeah, if it's wrong. But I think it's hot stove pack one. Th so, to be clear, listeners, hot stove pack one, not hot stove number one, which was a different product entirely. That's those are the new ones. I mean, you have to go correct. on the like new, the new ones are hot stove. To get the old ones. The old ones are hot stove pack, so pack. one and two. Right. Yeah. Super. Super clear. Correct. Very. But there's a scenario in there. Um, What's the name of it again? Uh, uh, no let me, name ridge. Let me whatever. scroll. Obang Knee Ridge. Do it. Yep. Yeah. Obang, Obang Knee Ridge, ridge um, which I think Evan did a map analysis on, but I don't know that we published that yet. So we have not. We have not yeah. done any of the spoiler any of the alert yeah. or but whatever it's, you it's want coming. to call it. Preview. Yeah, yeah. it's coming um, of the map yeah. for that one. And at some point, we will actually play that scenario. 
Pork Chop Hill was 2016. Okay. The the new yeah. one, yeah. The newer one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Originally, actually, the, the, I think I actually don't have that one. I have the original Talk Time Pass. I don't have the new one. Yeah. So but I think, got, Evan, don't I you have the new one? I do. I do have the yeah. new one. Yeah. Oh, and if you buy the original... If you buy the original... Oops. I'm muted. I was wondering. I was. Yeah, no, I, I was saying. You. I was saying things, and I thought I was like, "Ah, oh, my internet's just so bad that it's." Yeah. Not, well, not... all I heard was, "If you buy the original and then pause." If you buy the original and then pause, <laughs> and I was muted. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Go ahead. Try again. Uh, yeah. So the original actually has. So it uses, it uses the Tok Tong Pass Pat Tok Tong Pass Tok Tong Pass map Tok Tong. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's actually closer to the, the correct, you know, pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, it has scenarios for pork chop pill. So they use it as like a geo board in effect, oh, which okay. is pretty interesting. Which those scenarios do so appear later in the actual. Split it up. Oh. Yeah. They appear later, but they're different. And of course, the map right. is actual historical map. So I, sure. I, right. this is something I, well, well I, I, I do, as I'm, I, I, that is going to be an article or a video at some point. I just haven't. Nice. I haven't sat down to do it all, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I did start setting up and being like, okay, let's compare this because it's pretty interesting. I mean, right. what, you know, it's right. a good, it's pretty interesting to see what like a geo board interpretation well, versus an actual uh, historical map. Did, is like. Ridge, did Ridge Runners of Talk Time is that a winterized map? Yeah, the new one is. Yeah, yeah it's a nice map. It's it's big. Right, 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 right. But yeah, the original is not as not nearly as pretty, and I don't. Well, actually, there's a. Battlefield walk around I did on this that'll come out also at some point more for more teasing and spoiling and previewing. Uh, yeah, I don't normally care about winterized maps, but the Tok Tong, the new version is really pretty. The old map is yeah. less so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit more garish, but you know, as the as was the style at the time. That was two thousand six. The original it was two thousand six. Uh, and I was going to say about the. Uh, Hot stove pack number one or two, whichever it is. The uh, the Obong knee scenario is pretty cool because that's one of the few tank on tank combats of of the Korean War. So you got T thirty four eighty fives against uh, Pershings, which you know, for all you Cold War uh, <laughs> hot, Cold War gone hot wannabes that you don't want to have those combats, you can actually have them <laughs> historically with uh, with that. So that's it, it, uh, pretty nifty, right? And as an aside, if you want to read a really good book and know why they're called Ridge Runners, you need to read uh, On Desperate Ground by Hampton Sides. And you'll you'll understand why they're called Ridge Runners and why the module is called Ridge Runners of Tok Tong Pass. Man, we're getting all the book recommendations today. I'm we're telling you. We are We are a very literate <laughs> podcast. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Military history. Yeah, all right, exactly. All right, so that's enough about Korea, right? So the next, the next uh, war, actually, which which was um, contemporary ish, yes, I guess, contem- was Korea. Well, yes, it was kind it was. of right. Yeah, I mean, it, so it expanded past. No, you skipped yeah. one. I'm looking at the the show notes, and that's incorrect. What did I skip? The Ijurian War is the next. Well, okay. If you're going chronological, if you're going chronological, Dian Bien Phu should be before French. Oh Korea. well, yeah. Yes. I, oh, I wanted I, to put I a bundle that with just I, Vietnam, I know, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so know, we, we can talk about that a little bit. Well, let's let's do Algerian. Vietnam, Vietnam. The, Vietnam, the, the Fre- right. the, our, our, our French listeners have never been so mad. I know. Calling it Vietnam, Vietnam. It's their Vietnam, too. Don't. <laughs> so, so there's the Algerian okay. War, <laughs> which only has yes. one module. It's called French Algeria. It's actually, I've, I've played several scenarios from it. It's actually very good. It introduced um, suspect markers, which you see later on in the Vietnam modules, but where stuff is actually hidden. So it's it's akin to that other game with concealment, right? Um, but it, it, it's pretty cool. But there's only the one module. And although it also came with, uh, I don't know what they're called, Uber maps or monster maps or whatever, but a, a bigger map pack so you can play on bigger hexes. But uh, that's that's about it for that. It, it's um, cool. It's one, one of the few one ones that actually has. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say it's just it's Go one ahead. of the few modules that actually uses helicopters in combat. Yep. I mean the mm-hmm. first. Yep. Mm-hmm. The the, the I mean, it's very limited, do right? Not counting yeah. DMB and Foo, which has this helicopter scenario, but 
isn't yeah. actually yeah that was a, right. an error in this area but it's there <coughs> um, we'll talk about that as far as i know it's still available i didn't go look but we can go check but anyway uh, but then that leads us I'm into sure it it was uh, Vietnam. And as Evan pointed out, there's two two phases of Vietnam. There was the French experience <laughs> in Vietnam, and then there's the American experience in Vietnam. And I apologize to all one French listener that we have. Uh, I mean, we don't have any French about listeners. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, anyway. Uh, Canadians. But cover, Canadians I mean, the, the, some Canadians speak ahead. French. Some Canadians speak French. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so it did cover, but so the, the modules cover the gamut of both the French experience at DMB and Fu, at least, uh, and then the American experience uh, in Vietnam with Way and, and uh, Broken Arrow. So uh, DMB and Fu has been produced twice. Once was just called DMB and Fu, and the next one was called DMB Fu 2016, which was a very original name. And that deals with um, oh, uh, two. Is it? I think it's two of the strong points at Dean Binfu, right? It's just mm -hmm. Iliane and um, oh shit, what's the other one that's there? Uh, um, is the, it Gab Gabriel? I don't remember. The right side of the map. I can't remember now. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a very it's a it's a knife fight in a phone booth kind of uh, scenario packs, really. But um, it's fun. I played it, so I think Evan, you and I played a couple. I played a couple with um, my buddy Matt and uh, some other folks, but it's it's an interesting little module. And then there's Huey, which is obviously the Battle of Huey. Um, I mean, I could phenomenal. It is. Uh, yeah. I, I could nitpick the map a little bit. Um, I I don't like the way the Imperial City is depicted, but whatever. Uh, it, but it's it's cool. At one point, this was years ago. We got four or five guys together we played uh i think it's scenario 15 whatever the campaign scenario is the big one uh and that was just a hoot and a half i mean we were blowing crap away left and right on both sides with snipers and the on toast and everything else it was awesome um i ended up getting the uh full map so <laughs> it comes in map panels i ended up getting talking to ray and getting the map printed um as a full map just lay the whole thing out on one table um, without having to worry about map panels which is pretty cool but yeah, that's what we played on and then there's broken arrow which so it originally came out as uh, the tt version of lz x-ray and then uh ch critical hit released it later as broken arrow and there were two versions of that one for owners of way and one for owner uh people who just wanted broken arrow but that, that's actually a pretty good module as I recall, it doesn't actually feature a lot of helicopter stuff. It's all mostly your guys are here now, now fight the battle. So um, the rules it, are there, but you don't really play a lot of helicopter stuff. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it has seven scenarios maybe, and then one or two of them had, had yeah. attack helicopters. Right. But yeah, but this will be, a, this will be an article that's been written a long yeah, time it's ago, not, it's which not, is why it's I don't not, remember. Yeah, right. It's not, you know, but it's, it's not super helicopter anyway. heavy. Yeah. Right, you know the 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 uh, VC and slash NVA are coming down off the hill, and the, I mean all the terrain features are there. If you watch the movie or read the book, I I recommend reading the book. But uh, you know all the, all those things are there, so it's pretty cool. Here's my thing with that scenario that that module is there's two map panels, and all the scenarios you have to have both, but it overlaps it by like. You only, it only shows like five hexes. You only need like five hexes. It's like really small when it comes to the overlap. It's like mm. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, can't you just get a little bit bigger of a map? Like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Couldn't you, you just you, print you, the whole map? I mean, yeah, come on. No, on one, yeah, no. So, right. Yeah. Gotta get map panels. Yeah. So if you, lay, if you lay the two map panels on top of each other, one has... It's like, it needs like five extra hexes, and you can put right. it on one map. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a little annoying. <laughs> well, one of the things we be... played played on that played a scenario off of that one, which I read the. Oh yeah, I forgot we played that one. Yeah, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, I read the I read the victory mm -hmm. conditions wrong. Yeah, well, you know it happens. <laughs> you guys have like, thrown down a lot and a lot in Vietnam. You played a bunch of way too, right? Yeah, we we. Don't... Oh the shit, that's right, Tony. Remember we played that uh, night scenario and. Uh, oh, in way on yeah. the airfield in way, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. We played that. That was the first yep. time I really got to we we met yep, yep. face to face and we played. Yeah, that's right. That was live. Yeah, 
And I left that freak. I didn't realize yep. for some reason I left freaking <laughs> machine gun in the middle of the parking. Oops. Yeah, uh, well, you know, whatever. Mistakes were made. But, but, but not by us. But not by us. <laughs> Uh, well, the other thing, the other thing I find strange with Broken Arrow is that, like the battlefield walk around for what it is, is is nice, but it's like missing a lot of the like. I, I feel like it's you have to have a way to play, you know, to get some right. rules for, I don't know, the different like the M seventy nine grenade launcher and the RPG right. and whatever. There's other stuff in there. So, well, because when they Just transferred it to the Broken Arrow for Huey owners, they assumed you were going to own, right. Huey. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the classic you're going to own all of g watts and all of Correct. nevo and if you because don't if you don't then that's you, the sales model Evan. you're doing it you're doing it wrong right. well right i get that a little bit more for mevo and g watts they're like lines of product but like for i mean when, uh, this is just two separate yep. modules two 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 but i mean obviously yeah. that was not a problem for any yep. of us because we all got both nope. of them but you know for other right. people who are like you know, Mel Gibson fans. Well, I have I have TTLZ X-ray and Broken Arrow for Huawei owners because I bought Huawei, of course. But yeah. Anyway, but there you go. All right, and the last uh, one, right, which yeah. yeah, you added this one. I for, I totally blanked on this one. Thank you for adding it, Evan. I totally forgot for. about that. That's what I'm here for. Yep. 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 Well, this is this is a good one. one. That's what so he's the, here for. The Arab Israeli. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Someone's got to be that that asshole. That's right. That's right. Well, this is a good one. Arab is Arab. It is war. Arab Israeli wars. Yeah, that's a uh, that's got a lot of Chrome, but fun Chrome. And uh -huh. I've had a couple scenarios opposed, not solo for once, and they're pretty mm -hmm. pretty interesting. And on Vassal, which is nice because of all the amazing amount mm -hmm. of overlays. I'm glad I did not oh, do that with my physical game. Uh, yep. Yeah, and I don't know how balanced they were, but they were a heck of a lot of fun. So yeah. Yeah, that's a good I've one. only played one scenario from there, but it was super fun. Yeah, it's, it's and you can tell well, like that. No, go no, ahead. Go. you go. I was just say because it, it's interesting because it introduces ATGMs, right? Which yeah, is kind of cool. Except that now we have Mevo, so <laughs> and I <laughs> well, haven't they, done the analysis between what changed. But no, me neither. But the, they the rules are more complicated because you have to like lay down multiple markers and the wire if it goes right. over like water. Although some of that stuff might have been resolved. Like I'm yeah. guessing, you know, 50 well, I mean, years later, this is, wire guided HGMs, right. I mean, this HGMs is, don't care right. about going over ponds like they didn't. Exactly. Know, so. I mean, this is 56 to I think the centers are 56 through 73. Is that no, right? So it's 40, 48. Uh, 56, or 48, and 60, whatever. Oh, I thought there were some 73 scenarios in there. Maybe not. Okay. But anyway, I mean, it's early ATGMs. And, and yeah. so early ATGMs did have issues with that. So, you know, I, I don't doubt that, that that's probably real. So, I, yeah. Oh, no, I'm sure. I, and well, by, my, my concern more, you know, being the crunchy gear mm -hmm. that apparently I've become. Right. Uh, is, yes. <laughs> it's like, well, wait a second. Well, it's it's pretty bad. Be more, you know, more detailed. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> should they be more detailed in Mevo because if they were in right. you know, Israeli wars? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. I have to go check. I'm going to go look later. Right. But, but yeah, so that's mostly 1948, the yep. Jewish War of Independence, if you want other people call it other things and don't like that name. But Whatever. that's the name I remember right now, at, you know, 1010 at night. Uh, the right. 1956 war, and then and there's some mm -hmm. fun. There's a fun scenario with the Suez Canal and the French French paratroopers yep, yep, coming yep. in. Which is mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Uh, and then yeah, there's the one archers from 1960 one somewhere that I can't remember. Yeah. 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 Egyptian good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah there's, we already mentioned. There's, that. A lot, there's a, I mean, you get a lot of stuff in that pack too. Yeah, you yeah. do. And so I think uh, that came in a magazine, right? So. Oh, oh, that yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So that's actually one yep. too, where you're like, you really can see the dedication and the love. I mean, this is you yeah. know, someone. It's like a, I don't think a professional historian of Arab-Israeli wars, but you know, like a very, 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 very serious amateur, if not a, if not a professional <laughs> historian. Um, so there's tons of articles and like, okay, this is legit. There's like a lot right. of research and thought put into this. Uh, and you can, you know, there's a lot of design art, design, designer notes and scenario analyses of, of their own article, of their own scenarios rather, which is pretty, fun, right. pretty cool. So no, absolutely. Good stuff. All right. Uh, so 
on that note, so we, we kind of talked about the modules, right? So those are the modules that are available. Um, we will link it in the show notes, but most of those, some, some of those are no longer available from CH. You're going to have to find them on the secondary market. We'll um, probably well, I make think a BTG. I think actually all of them probably are. All of them? You think? Yeah. I think so. Well, except the newer for, versions. Except for Hot Stove yeah, Pack yeah, yeah. 1. Sure, sure. Yeah. Hot Stove Pack 1, good luck finding that, but, you know, whatever. Um, but everything else, I mean, play, I haven't like, checked in a long the time, but they, Arab, they were on there for a long time on the website. The Arab Israeli Wars, Wars, I don't think, is available. You have to find that yeah, on the secondary that's, market. But. That's the one I was right, I yeah. find. I was just yeah, going yeah. through all of them. It is. No, 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 no. It is. Is it available? That's the ATS briefing number two. Yeah. But is it still available on CH? Really? It was last time I checked, which was, you know, however long ago. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, and, you know, we will stand by to stand by to be correct. Uh, but anyway, we'll post links for all that stuff. But anyway, uh, so the goal is, um, well, I'll let Evan talk about that because it's mostly Evan anyway, but uh, about what to look forward to from us regarding that. Oh, what from an ATSFE standpoint. And oh, while you geez. do that, I'm going to go grab a beer. So <laughs> unless you guys just want to pause. <laughs> I mean, we can talk, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so you, definitely. You talk, Evan. I'll talk. I'll talk. The the briefing number two is still available. Uh, yeah, with the, yep. the, the yep, coupon just, code, it's not too bad. You found it. Yeah. Wait, Tony, yeah, do you not do you not have it? No, I don't have this one. Oh, for shame! For shame. I think I'm gonna have to add it to my list to get now. Yeah, I, I, I mean I everything I wanted. Yeah, exactly. That that happens all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm set. I'm set with four games. I'm set with ATS, and then you know something happens. And I was like, oh no. Well, oh, no, it was like I was thing. pretty much all set with with uh, World War II stuff. I'm like, I'm I'm good. I don't see very much anything <laughs> I really want. The battle at best is kind of the one that I keep on thinking and keep flipping around. But then I saw the Pegasus Bridge one or the Operation Dead Stick. That's World War II. This is not post World War II. What the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying we were just saying that. Uh, we were kind of like, I think I'm good, but now I have to add this to the want scenario. <laughs> I have this one. So I'm like, our I thought goal. I was good. Yeah. Our goal in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. So, but. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, no, all of them actually, to sell, yeah, sell more them. ATS products. Yeah. Right. For yeah. which we get nothing. Zero. <laughs> um, and I'm fine. I, I do. All of, the, all of these, all these are on. You can get them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm fine with that too. I should point out that while well, in the, uh, I have it on good authority that the, the ATS has been become more popular in terms of sales and nice. and also the well, this isn't the Friday email or that the membership of the critical hit message board has gone up also thirty eight percent or whatever. So yeah, people are and we've we've seen a lot more activity on Discord and on yeah. Facebook. So right. I was going to say, if you, yeah, to be clear, I, I mean, I highly, yes, join the CHMB. I think you're automatically enrolled anyway if you buy a product from CH. But that said, I highly encourage you to find us. Um, there's a link. There will be links uh, where you can send us an email. But get on the Discord uh, for mm -hmm. discussions and all kinds of stuff for that, for ATS, including Mevo. Especially if you want questions on Mevo. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> All the all questions. Right. We've got all the questions right. and some of the answers, oh, but definitely not all of the answers. Right. Well, so that's a good, that's, that's a good fun. segue. Um, yeah. So another, another uh, <laughs> trivia question is yeah, what beer did I right get? Because it's my favorite beer ever. And I'm sure I've mentioned it before on a podcast. Backwards or something. bastard. Oh shit. Tony, you're not supposed to say it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you're all right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I know this answer. I know the yep. answer to this question. It's so well, Tony good. Got, Tony got the trivia question right. Maybe he's the winner. Yay. Tony wins the prize. Yay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, good segue. To, so, so modern ATS, we'll do a brief update, I guess, on uh, modern ATS, which is different from post-World War II ATS, which is still cats. Uh, to well, so what are we going to call Mevo Afghanistan? Modern ATS. Uh, I know. What, what's, I know what's so, okay, I didn't so, read it. What, what's, yeah, the so, what's the year? So, yeah, Evan pointed out um, in our, uh, in a, whatever, different communication channel that Tony and I <laughs> apparently both glossed over the Friday emailer from last week, uh, which, oh, yeah. spoiler alert, I guess it's not a spoiler alert, but you can go to the CHMB and go read that emailer. But uh, that uh, Ray said something about um, 
providing Afghanistan counters, uh, something counters, counters. right? Ta- I don't Taliban. remember the exact verbiage. He said yeah, Tal- Taliban, Taliban, and, and Mujahideen, and, and 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 weaponry and stuff for um, uh, uh, Afghanistan, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting. Right? I mean, yeah. When I so but we I were, I think it's we, under the Mevo umbrella, right? Not the Cap yes. umbrella. Yeah. So yes, we were right, we were so. actually playing, and Tony had, had popped in. And you guys were talking about the Friday emailer, and I hadn't read it at that point. And I, oh, like, right, I, right, right, right. My audio wasn't like it was breaking up, and I was like, like it is, you know, all the time. Like you third know, world like, internet. Yeah, exactly. Two minutes ago, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, maybe they didn't mention it. And I read they mentioned, it and I didn't hear it. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I thought they would have been a bit bigger deal about that. So I, and I read that, and I was like, oh my gosh, come on! And, I, and I, like you know, that seemed like something both you guys would be interested in. So <laughs> yeah, I totally. Well, it was one. In our defense, it was one sentence. Yeah, it was just it was in there and randomly buried in the stream of consciousness emailer, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't read the whole thing word for word. I scan it. So yeah, I missed. It. You scan I, it. My, you scan my it. mea culpa. I missed it. Right, but yeah. good, good on you that you saw. It. I mean, that's pretty exciting, especially in terms of. So I mean, so when you said that, my thoughts immediately went to, oh shit. I've been reading the outpost and red platoon. Oh my gosh. I could not to, not to, to diminish what occurred there and the, and the sacrifice and the valor that happened, but we could play that out. We could see, and I say that in terms of, we could play that out. Does the model work right? Mm. Uh, in That's terms of that particular engagement, which, you know, there's a, there's a discussion I saw today on, uh, oh no, uh, it might be a question to be answered tomorrow. But what's too close, too soon, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, is yeah, Afghanistan yeah. too soon? Uh, I don't know, right? No, um, no. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I think there's a, I think there's a touchy feely answer, but there's also a mm, component model answer, and I think those two things are probably different, but. Uh, Anyway, you know, in terms of modeling it out and seeing, well, does the model actually accurately capture? Because at the end of the day, I don't think any of us are in this to glorify anything. But if we're going to do it, it's to learn something. And if we're going to learn something, right. then the model should be accurate. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think most people who are involved would, would have a problem if it were done in a, you know, a responsible, respectful way and in, in the spirit of right. trying to understand. and Right, 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 right. You're not glorifying. Uh, yeah, I mean, those conversations about like, yeah, you know, people, you know, selling off their Russian models and miniatures and no, like, whatever. Nah, yeah, I was like, I just roll my, I can't roll my eyes hard enough on a podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Go find uh, your favorite ro- eye rolling meme and use that. Yeah, yeah. Especially because there, a lot of the stuff that people are making are two different eras, too. Right. Like, yeah. World War yeah. II. Which is right. totally different doctrine, totally different everything. Yeah. You know, you know that's, Soviet. That's why Soviet that's why instead of autocratic it. dictator. Yeah, right. you know. yeah whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, do I think there are people out there who would willingly cash in? Sure, there are. I mean, because people suck. <laughs> right? Yeah. Clearly. But, you know, I mean, for the most part, yeah, I don't. You know. yeah. I always try to, especially when I'm playing World War II say soviets and not russians because a lot of times they're not <laughs> just russians they're that's true you know that's true. right you know because the soviet well they're soviets had, yeah they're soviets right so i always try to make sure i don't say russian <laughs> right. soviets although that was the funniest kick. that was the funniest thing ever and not to bring any other game system into it but in, in a in another game system that featured russians you know um that I might be intimately involved in. Uh, some guys were constantly calling the Russians Soviets. I, I laughed every time. And, and I caught myself doing it too. It's just so funny because, I mean, they've been the boogeyman. So we're all roughly the same age. Evan's younger. Um, <laughs> Guilty. But, right. But, I mean, in, in terms of in terms of who is the boogeyman, it was always the Soviet Union, right? Not mm-hmm. Russia. And so it's just, it's like that natural default of, what well, was the Soviet? Oh, I mean, the Russians. The Russians, yeah, the Russians, not the Soviet Union. Soviet Union isn't a thing anymore. Although Putin's trying to his best to put it back together, but whatever. Right. Well, all right. He won't so this live is long enough. He won't live long enough. But anyways, 
this is, yeah, this we're, is deep. we're very far afield now. <laughs> yeah, this, this is deep enough into the podcast where I can make I can make these sort of comments because you know the, the, the seven people that started listening, you know, is down to one. Yeah, so we've lost. Person, we've lost. We've lost. You know, five or six listeners. So the, the last one or two people won't be too outraged probably right. at this point. No, no. Uh, but something I do find absolutely baffling is that, to put it delicately, people of certain political persuasion seem to not mm. want Ukraine like they don't seem to be interested in Ukraine winning, or maybe they just hmm. see that it's unlikely. I don't know. Which I just find baffling because people of the same political persuasion, you are very much against the Soviet Union. I'm like, this just, it just, right. I, I don't understand. Just like this, mm -hmm. And the same mm -hmm. people, you know, call it, call it Soviet. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Yeah. That's weird. Know. It's weird. All I know is with Mevo, I can game it out. Exactly, which is at a very tactical level, a very a very unique experience. Actually, that's not something you could. Uh, it is. I mean, I, I yeah. So I was pushing counters around. I, this is funny because I was like, you know, this is a little bit weird. You know, th these are T eighty fours. These are T nine. Well, not T nineties, but T seventy twos and T eighties and T and BMP three. I'm like, holy shit! I mean, these are real vehicles moving around on a real battlefield right now. It was just weird, right? It's pretty crazy. Yep. But from it's from a technical standpoint of how does this work? You know what I mean? Well, we've talked about that, right? So the, there's the social media aspect of this war, which the Ukrainians are winning hand down, hands down. I've said that many, many, many times. I mean... For every Soviet or, <laughs> shit, for every Russian <laughs> tank, he did it. He did it. <laughs> he just did it. We just talked about that. For every Russian tank that you see the top being blown off, you know, yeah, that was one successful missile strike. What you didn't see on that social media post were the ten missiles that missed. Or oh yeah, all those whatever. all those ricochet right. ineffectives that, that it, Mitch loves know, to roll with which, his ATGMs. Right. <laughs> What, what am I at now? Like one for six? Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. <laughs> the law, the law, law of large numbers has not caught up with you yet. <laughs> it's because you're right. not playing enough. You're not play, we're not playing enough. Obviously. I'm not playing enough. Yeah. Exactly. So that that's our listeners. This is our advice to you: play more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You, get the right. get the numbers to even out for you. Although speaking right. of Mitch, I thought you'd appreciate this. So I was playing that lost cluster scenario. No. Yeah. Oh, I muted myself. All right, there we go. And no, uh, I said, <laughs> and, so, and uh, so the Russians are, you know, they got lots of vehicles, and the the Ukrainians don't have too many vehicles, and it seemed like it was pretty pretty even. And then, you know, big time spoiler alert: like the Russians are like, okay, well, we have lots of vehicles, and I, I modified the in laws to make them <laughs> single shot because they're, you know, single shot. Uh, and I gave, I get. Yeah, exactly. And I gave the Ukrainians a couple <laughs> more to, to compensate, but still. Sure. <laughs> so the Russians like, yeah, well, okay, we have an extra BMP. Like, let's just send it mm -hmm. in. And if it we will hope the end law misses. And if it doesn't, great. Then we'll, you know, light those guys up. Um, right. As we've seen, the 30 millimeter auto cannon is pretty, pretty deadly. Fucking deadly. Yes. <laughs> That's a better way to put it. Yeah. So, so just, just to put that in context, acquired rate of fire, 113. Yeah, you individual need it. shots. You don't, you don't right. even need the quiet rate of fire. That's the scary part. So, so this BMP goes in to go blow these guys up in, in rubble, and it has to, it has to, like the, it's kind of like a tight turn, so it has to go in and expose its flank, mm -hmm. and it turns the turret beforehand mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. shoot at them. So they get their free shot with the end law, and there, yeah, there's some modifiers, whatever, there's some cover, of vehicles moving, but it's a flank shot. It's you know, it's a hmm. two range, like the end law is really, really accurate. Oh. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so they fire, of course, to get a nice, nice little hit. Yep. yep. They roll high, pretty high, oh. seventy-two. But seventy-two on a flank shot is not a ricochet ineffective. It would have been from the front. Now, mm. thank you, sir. That would have been your, uh, right. that would have been your roll. So that was actually yep, yep, yep. St still, I think, a track hit. I think it was a track hit. Seventy-two. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, speak, so in that book, Syrian Conflagration, oh, yeah, when you yeah, see yeah, yeah. the BMP from the side, you're like, oh, okay, that's why the track is it has such right. a large range. It's, it's, it's freaking huge. tall. It's like six yeah. feet tall, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so they get a track hit. I was like, okay, okay. So I, and I was going to play with the modified rule that, you know, the, the over-penetration that you mentioned before. Yep, yep, which, yep, yep. 
by raw which is at the skills. end of the rule book and the rule end book there. of the rule book last rule very last rule chapter m sorry yes chapter m it's not a rule book it's just chapter m exactly even though i don't have chapters in ats but whatever yeah, right. so <laughs> so it's like okay so for every you know 10 whatever points over the yep. you know the blah, blah blah you get the the negative the minus on the the m kill roll so it makes it less likely to m kill i was like okay great and i was like oh, i rolled a natural two i didn't even need it it's no M kill. It's hmm. a K kill. We're on the K kill table. Bam. 10. No K kill. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I probably don't need to play the rest of this scenario. I'm going to keep going. There's a I lot of rolling to get to in effect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, oof, it was a sad nice. day for the Ukrainians. And then all four of those guys, yeah, they all, they all got lit up. Whatever. Right. Whatever. But the, I mean, this is why we play games. This is chaos of war, baby. Yeah, well, I mean, in this scenario, like, uh, like I alluded to, or just said straight up before, I mean, the, this is probably the, the most elucidating so this is, uh, scenario. This is uh, number 13, right? Number 13, yes. Which one did that come in? That came in... Ukrainians, because it's 6-6. Six, six, so that was six, 3? Then... Hmm? Is that module 3? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and, that, and it's and it's a good one. There's lots of options for setup and how you can attack as the Russians and cool. the defense and yeah. So yeah, and it, yeah, I learned a lot. It's like, oh, okay, this is why the things we're seeing are happening are happening. That right. makes a lot of sense. Right, right. No, I mean that's just, that's the funny thing, right? Is that when you're playing, you can kind of see some of that. Like, like I mean, I joke about it that I'm 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 one for six or whatever, but that's. That's the part, like I said, you're not seeing that on social media. Is yeah, I'm I'm right. firing all these ATGMs. I'm missing. It, well, to be clear, I'm not missing. I'm just not hitting anything vital, right? I'm hitting a bustle rack, or you know, there's a limb, tree limb, or something in the way, whatever, right? Or or just glances off the armor. So, you know, that there's a reason there's armor on a tank. The reason it's sloped a certain degree, you know, whatever, um, around might hit it, and literally just bounce off so and you're the best regardless, at bounce, regardless of the off. penetration and explosive power right so right yeah yeah we definitely don't see don't see all the all all the missing and all the procedure nope. to get to get right. up to the, <laughs> the exciting right. well exciting i mean day. you know i was talking to somebody the other day um <laughs> it actually might have been you but you know we've shipped how many thousands of javelins yeah yeah you made that cover <laughs> and they're they're running out well if we shipped I'll just make up. I'll just make up numbers. If we ship ten thousand javelins, why aren't there ten thousand dead Russian? Oh, well, <laughs> right. Because some of them miss, right? And some of them ricochet, and some of them don't hit the target, and some, you know, whatever. So, you know, it makes sense. It's just I think as gamers, we're like, well, I hit. I should actually have some kind of impact. Well, maybe yeah, not. Maybe not. Right. I mean, yeah. that's just real life. Welcome to real life. Well, we talked about that, like the cats model is different because it's trying to encapsulate it so so when you roll a die in cats you're not that's not a single round going down range right that's some number of rounds let's call it five right that that's are that are encapsulated in that role as opposed to in mevo when you fire a shot you fire a shot and every so round to get the same effect you need to fire five times that that, that you would fire in cats right so that, that's one of the things to keep in mind, I think, when you're playing or, or transitioning between the two systems of, well, well, shit, I missed. Well, how come that's not the way it works? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> why didn't my tank, why didn't that tank turn it blow up and blah, 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 you know, whatever. You'll get, to, you'll get to shoot a lot more. Although it goes to a larger issue, too, of, and I found myself doing it with like, with the Enlaw in particular. Uh, yeah, uh, people in general, war gamers, probably more, more so than others, you know, were like, oh, well, this is the this is the badass weapon system. You know, the javelins, it's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, you miss or ricochet with it. And you're like, what? That's, <laughs> this model's <laughs> broken. This game is bad. Yeah, <laughs> right. But no, and this, this is happening Twitter all sorts so. of, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think lots of weapons get reputations that, you know, are mm. deserved or not deserved. Mm -hmm. Probably more likely yep. not deserved. It's all about propaganda, baby. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's not even like, like a lot of that's not even, I mean, okay, in Ukraine, like, the propaganda about the javelins on purpose, but lots of other yeah, lots well, of other weapons have had like you know good or bad propaganda. It's not a, it's not like yep. someone's doing it you know from above top right. down. It's just like exactly. it just happens because people when people talk about it, although you know, right, uh, right, right, right. Humans are right. humans are fickle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. 
Um, so last last thoughts on Mevo are we have a fact page, a uh, frequently asked questions page on the blog. Again, that's atsfe.wordpress.com uh, uh, that we continuously update as we get answers back on uh, things that just, just aren't clear in the uh, chapter M rules. Uh, so check that out. Um, and then I think, I think we're running close to running out of time, but Tony, I think I want to ask you, where are you at in your uh, design of Hungarians versus Romanians? Um, I am actually down to the point where I'm trying to figure out the number of uh, squads and um, uh, tanks that hmm. the Hungarians uh, get to have on the first initial advance. So one of the things we had talked about is um, using a boar sighting mechanic um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, it was well known that the Hungarians were coming. It wasn't like a surprise to the Romanians. So they were able to range out their really effective rest restus, which is an anti-tank gun and a very, very good one. Uh, if it hits, I think, any of the Hungarian guns uh, anywhere, it's it's going to be uh, at least a immobilization, if not a K-kill, if not a burnt wreck firing like crazy smoke. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty effective gun. Um, I'm still waiting. I had issues with some uh, cards that were not sent with the module that I bought that has... Hungarian and uh, Romanians in there. So those are on their way. So that's kind of slowing me up a little bit. But I have actually found a map for my first scenario, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, I was going through the Blood and Steel module, which is another Hungarian-Romanian module, but it was when the Romanians were on the Hungarian and the, and the Hungarians were allies. Right. I'm doing it after <laughs> when they were not allies, when they were uh, adversaries. So what's what I I'm I'm looking forward to to working that out and having you guys take a look at that. But um, it's uh, after looking at the resta, I was like, oh my god, this gun is really really effective. So mm -hmm. I know that I, I I'm tweaking this uh, scenario victory conditions, but I know the Hungarians' main victory conditions they have to take out those AT. ATGs. They have to take out the anti-tank guns. They will not survive if they don't take those out. So, cool. and then I'm playing around with exactly what the Romanians do if it's just, we gotta stay for so long, you know, and not do it, so. But, yeah, no, it's really, 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 really getting good. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward on it, because I finally just, once I found a map, I was like, mm. oh, it's a good way to start, at least. And then I might start right. looking through all the other maps that they have and see if there's one for kind of that next scenario where I want. It. So maybe I won't have to design the map. <laughs> that was that was kind of a hard. That was hard. I've I've been working on the map, so I have some idea. And if I right. can find something that has a similar look, I might just use that because then I'll be like, hey, you've already got the map. Here's the no. scenario. Maybe, that, you know, right? I mean, if, yeah. if they've bought that module. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think one of the things you need to think about it, do you want do you want to base your module on somebody owning a previous module or well, what I would do will it is come I with would, the map? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what I would do is I would, because my goal is to have scenario maps. Right. So I'll have like at least two scenarios per so you, so, map. So you're thinking at least just for playtesting, you can use that map at least yes, to playtest it. Yes, yeah, yeah, at least to playtest right. it and, and see what would work. Uh, because I, you know, I want to actually have like, so the first one has an anti-tank ditch all the way across. And instead of putting the little pieces down, because Lord knows we don't have enough to fit across the map panel. <laughs> uh, right. To have an actual art all the way across. And right. so, you know, that's kind of, you know, that's one of those things that, but for now, I've got a map that I can at least play test on and then I can see, okay, well, this works, this doesn't work. So, right. but I did, um, thanks to you guys mentioning it, um, at one point that hmm. I'm going to start doing a vlog on 
how I'm nice. doing this. Um, oh yeah. I threw it out. I threw it out to a few people said, Hey, what do you guys think about this? And they're like, Oh, that sounds great. This would be hmm. great. So they're like, I'd watch it. I was like, okay. So, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, it's like, it's not like it's going to be long It's like five minutes or so, five, 10 minutes of, so here's where I'm at. And this is what I've done. And this right. is where I came from. So it's just right. kind of like, a uh, how do I, how is it going through? So cool. But yeah, I'm I'm getting excited about it for sure. It's starting to like it's been like out there in a bunch of places, and now it's starting to kind of come together. At least that first scenario, and I think once I get that first scenario going, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> it's like nice. I just, yeah, well, I just got to get that first one done. Right. And once I get that first one done, I right. think the next one will be like okay. Let me let me tell you, way. Tony, that's exactly the way it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. You uh, get the first scenario down, you put some counters down, you play through it, and you're like, okay, yeah, there's there's probably a game here. Okay, let's move on, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, and then just using you guys uh, for help, and then uh, I'll be asking, because I, I want these to be play tested, so I don't want to send it. If anything. only you had a ready pool of play testers. I if know, I can't only. find them anywhere. I, I mean, nobody fucking plays ATS, I'm telling you. Nope. People who can help you to lovingly craft these scenarios. Lovingly craft, that's right. <laughs> will be the, the most lovingly crafted scenarios of all time. It will be. They'll be very balanced. No, no. I mean, lovingly crafted. Lovingly crafted. Yes. Lovingly Although crafted. probably not as lovingly crafted as uh, the first scenario from the um, Spanish Azul Division that the OG did. Uh, As he said, he played that first one about 50 times. Uh, no, that yes. pro I, I probably... Oh, such a I good could, module. I could pro yeah, it is, but I could probably never craft that lovingly any any scenario, no. personally. No, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. No, no. I mean, but you know. That's why, that's why it's a great module. Exactly. We love the OG. OG, if you're still listening, probably not. That's right. But... Yeah, at this point, it's probably tuned out. But if anybody has continued to listen for this long, <laughs> good on you. First of all, good on you. A, B. We appreciate it. You can be entered into a drawing to get some free ATS stuff. Should we should we say what it is, or, or should it be a surprise? Well, don't say it like that. Oh no, there, you're, you're, this is this is so, this is good shit right here. Uh, it should be a surprise, but give it a little um, bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tease a little bit more than that because you made it sound like it. It could just be like a box uh, like edition an extra sheet of, of workers an or something. Older... <laughs>